Welcome back to a new episode of Mushroom Programming. In today's episode, we're going to have a very quick and short tutorial on how to add game controls on any of our subjects or any of our elements added on the screen. It's actually very easy to do so, and it's amazing because in just a few seconds, you'll be able to actually add controls that allow you to use the arrows on your keyboard or WASD on your keyboard to move an element from one area to one area. So that can be like a car, a character, a vehicle. And if you're into game design, this is actually like the best and quickest way to actually do that. So without further ado, let's get started. Now I've already added a scene here. Now you don't actually need to do this. You can um, just go ahead and start with what I will do now. But if you want, you can just add any scene to do so. You can click on the plus icon, go to library, go to scenes. And there's so many different scenes that you can select from. For now, I already added this one. It just has some random elements. And if I play this right now, you can see that there is nothing here other than just some random elements and that's it. So what I'll do is I'll close this and I'll click on the plus icon and let's add something from the library. So I want it to be a character because I actually want to want it to look like it's a game. So I guess we can just move around and maybe we can select this burger guy. So let's just move him and add him somewhere on the screen and we can see that he's right over here now the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to click play and right now if i click on any of the keyboard control elements nothing happens but the idea here is that we want this burger dude to be able to walk around and jump and so on and we don't actually need to do anything from scratch we can just select this element and what i'll do is if you look over here on the right side what we need to do is we need to select events so i'm going to select events and instead of it saying start we can click on it and we can scroll down now you can actually manually do this by key up down or press like actually manually specify which keys you want them to do what but instead if we just keep looking down there is actually already an option here that says game controls so if i go ahead and select game controls we can over, we can see now that there is default movement options that are set for us. For example, we can have it so that it's a walk instead of fly. And we're going to actually toggle between those and see what each of those do. We have auto orient set to yes. So that means if you're going right, the character will automatically face right. If you're going left, it will automatically face left. And here it says towards camera or axis. Grand tilt, you've got the speed, a run factor, a rot speed, delay, and so on. And if I keep going further, we even get some collisions already set up straight away. So some physics we have jumping. So if I'm going to jump, what happens? And so on. There's actually a lot of nice options here. And here we've got a camera follow option. Now, this one is very important and I'll show you the difference between them. But right now, if we run this and we build and I move the character, the camera stays where it is and the character moves. So let's actually go ahead and click play and I'm going to click on D. Oops, and we can see nothing is happening. So <laughs> let's actually have a look as to why. So I've got the game controls on our hammy burger here. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, there we go. So I think you just needed to load. Now you can see a few things here. A, as I'm moving, so I'm clicking on D now and it's going right and it's automatically rotating. And I can also jump. So if I click on S, uh, sorry, if I click on space bar, I'm jumping. And if I use the arrow keys, I can actually rotate where the character is looking at. So let's say I go forward and I'm using the controls, the arrow keys, I can just choose where to go. There we go. And it's very cool because usually you would actually need to program this. You can see that it actually collides with elements as we're going. And that's because the game controls element or event that we added actually already includes everything we need in terms of collision, in terms of physics to interact with everything else. Now, just really quickly, if I add another element here that does not have physics, so let's say I go library and we add, let's say a bag somewhere on the screen here. So see how there is a bag over here? Now, if I click on play, and I'm moving, it will automatically know 
what to interact with and what not to interact with. Now, it's actually a little bit glitchy that usually doesn't happen, but I just want to show you that because this element has collision on it, it will not be able to interact with that element that does not have physics applied to it. But everything else works exactly as expected. Now, let's go ahead and explore some of the other options that we've got. So if I click on this element and click on game controls, let's have a look at what fly means. Now, over here, this might not seem like a difference, but if I'm going over here, you can see the other one was direct or bound to the floor, which meant that you can jump, but you always go back down. This option, however, you are not. You can do all sorts of things, just like you can see now, because the game controls no longer are bound to physics in terms of there is a ground and you need to be stuck by it. It will just continue to do and behave as if you're flying basically and again this would actually take a lot of time for it to be done but because we're using spline it's actually very quickly to do so now you do still collide with elements including the floor so if i go ahead and move you will still be able to interact onto things and if i look up i'll be able to fly but if i look down i'll actually just collide with the floor and it will go nowhere so it's good to know that if you're designing an airplane or like a ufo or anything like that that's the option to use. Now I'm going to change this back into walk and you can see here that we can actually increase the speed. So let's set it up to 3000. And he in the desktop controls, you've got rotate by, it can be by mouth, can be both or the keys. Um, in our options, uh, or sorry, in here right now, if I set it, first of all, you can see how fast we are because we changed it. <laughs> but yeah now there's something that i wanted to show first of all let's just drop the speed a little bit down because it was too much but if i go down further you can see that you've got touch controls so if i'm using this on an iphone you can see that he and we can actually move this you've got the control to jump right here and the controls to move on the left side so if i'm holding a phone i can use this to change how that works and I can select joystick and instead we'll be able to have a joystick here that we can use, but I'll keep it as drag. You also have different things like you can increase the button sizes on the actual screen itself um, and you can choose what to hide and show. Again here, if you wanna remove collision, we can. So right now, if I click on this, I will not collide with anything. I can just continue to move into anything, but I want the collision. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Now this is very important, it's actually the last thing that I want to show, but that is the camera follow. Now as you can see, while I'm, if I run this again, as I'm going, the camera stays the same. That means I can actually get entirely out of the camera frame. But what if you want the camera to follow the character? Well, we can scroll down and we can select personal camera. And here we have different options now. But before anything, I just want to show you how that works. So I'm going to click this. And you can see that now we have control to change the camera, just like a video game. We can actually follow our character. We can go up and down and we can see it as it's interacting with different elements. And maybe this will be better if I go over here and click both and click this. And now as I'm moving, you can see just how in video games we can change directions. I'm going to go back and let's go down over here. You also have really nice options here. So I can click on orient to normal. And it doesn't automatically change. So right now I'm actually manually having to choose where to point the camera at, but it works. And one final thing, we actually have an up and down. So I have it as yes, left and right, yes, but you can actually limit it. So I can click no. And now if I run this, I can no longer move my camera left and right. So I can't rotate around my character. I can still, it, the camera still follows the character, but I cannot sort of rotate around it like I was showing you before. Anyway, this was a very quick tutorial on how uh, game controls work and all the other options that you can do in it, such as the camera, the movement, the flying, everything to do with controls basically, but I'm sure we can explore a little bit more in the future and find out what else we can do. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please make sure you do leave a like and subscribe and maybe give me some feedback on how you, you would like these tutorials to run in the future. 
Thanks so much and I hope to see you in the next episode.